it appeared that there was like a kidnapping attempt on me while I was staying at what? the hotel. I made a video about it. Um, uh, it it's, uh, it's a weird thing where I, I, I was heading home the next day and I got a call from a guy at the front desk saying, uh, when are you, uh, we understand you're leaving tomorrow. When are you checking out? We'll get a cab for you. And I said, well, that's very nice of you. Know, I'm, I'll be checking out at noon and, uh, hung up and then went, wait a minute. Been here for a few days. I've never seen a guy at the front desk. So I went to the front desk and talked to the woman there. And she said, uh, no, there's no guy who works here, but we did have a guy come down here, um, asking what room you were in. And, um, and he said, uh, he, he would, uh, you know, uh, he was trying to, to talk to me. So they, they found out what room I was in. Um, so I called then the, um, the sheriff, uh, in the middle of the night and explained this. And the sheriff said, okay, well, don't, don't worry. Uh, they came at 11 in the morning and they actually took me in a, uh, their, their car over to the airport. Uh, but weird. And in Clearwater, you can call the police or call the sheriff's department and tell them some odd thing. And if it involves Scientology, they'll go, okay, we understand. Uh, that may just seem bizarre in any other city, but, but here, uh, uh, yeah, uh, Scientology, uh, there may be something to it. I'm surprised they haven't infiltrated the police force and things like that. Well, they, they may have somebody on the force they have had in the past. Uh, there certainly, uh, are people who, um, uh, well, let me, let me see how best to say this. Cause I, I really do like our police force. Uh, I work closely with them now on the uh, Clearwater city council. Uh, the, the police of chief, the uh, police chief, rather chief slaughter, uh, I think is a terrific guy and is doing a great job. But when I first moved here uh, back in 99, uh, I spent two years working downtown with a, a group called the Lisa McPherson Trust, which was a group set up to help people who were abused and defrauded by Scientology. And we bought uh, a, a building just a couple of doors down from Mike Rinder's old office, the Office of Special Affairs. And we said, we're not afraid of you. Um, and Scientology decided the best thing that they could do is hire off-duty police officers to sit on this little quiet street that we shared. And they'd have officers there every single day on the payroll for nothing. We weren't a threat. There was never anything uh, going on except, um, you know, the, the officers got a... a uh, delivered a, a nice warm meal for them. They, they mm -hmm. sat there and made it like $158 a day. Uh, and then when there was any type of incident that involved us in Scientology, the officers always seemed to cite Scientology. There was, uh, uh, there were incidents that I, I, I captured on, on uh, video and I put together in a, a video back then called Scientology and the Clearwater Police. These are troubling things. Uh, like one time I was helping a German film crew who came to town. They were going to interview a, a, a Scientologist painter who lived in the town. And they wanted me to go with my camera and stay back as they knocked on the door and try to get an interview. So I did that and no one answered at, at the house. So we turned around and started heading back to our cars when suddenly one of the uh, German filmmakers turned around and gone, tune, tune. And I turned around and there was a guy with a hammer right behind me. He whacked my camera a couple of oh times my God. and was cursing and, uh, you know, uh, telling us to get out of there. Um, we called the police and the police, you know, we, I explained to him, listen, uh, we've got the whole thing on tape. I can show you. He came out at us with a hammer and the police officer looked at me and said, you're, uh, you work down there on Watterson street with that Bob Mitten, right? I said, oh yeah, I work with the Lisa McPherson trust. And he, all right, let me see your IDs. So he took our IDs, but when it came time to talk to hammer guy, 
they didn't bother looking at an ID. Um, and later that night, I, I gave my footage to one of the local TV stations and they ran a story about it. At the end of the news story, uh, they always go back to the anchor live on the air for some little one-liner about the story. Uh, so the anchor said, we've contacted the Church of Scientology and they say they have no idea who this guy is. Luckily, there's a database online of everyone who had mm -hmm. taken Scientology courses. So I looked him up and they, he'd taken several courses. And I called the police and said, well, wait, wait a minute. Then they went back the next day and discovered that when they talked to the guy, he gave them a phony name, a phony uh, uh, social security number, and a phony birthday. And when they looked him up, finally, the guy was wanted on coke charges in, uh, in, in Key West. And he was arrested and went to jail for a year for that. But I mean, there were since, uh, situations like this where, okay, um, maybe <laughs> you should be a little less biased. Uh, and these officers were, you know, some of the people who were uh, being paid by Scientology. And I, I, I don't mean to say that they were corrupt, um, but it just goes to show how Scientology tries to corrupt people through money.